who's an um, who is an expert when it comes to governance and of course Dr. Nzika, education advisor at the NCCK when it comes to matters referendum. Of course the church has weighed in on this and um, gentlemen thank you so much for joining us. The church has weighed in when it comes to matters referendum. You're talking about including the position of a prime minister, a deputy prime minister and of course having an opposition leader yet Kenyans are talking about reducing the number of leadership in the country. How viable is that? Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Um, I want to specify that even though I sit here for the NCCK, I actually represent the entire spectrum of the religious bodies, the civic societies and the trade unions, based on a national dialogue conference we had at Ufungamano on 11th to 13th of September. So the views that I present here to Kenyans are not even for the NCCK alone. Mm -hmm. they, are, they were actually done by over 600 delegates who came together, uh, including women, community, uh, the youth, uh, people with disabilities, even the various religious groups all over the country mm -hmm. with the 47 counties. Mm -hmm. So this is not a position that was not well thought out. So when we, when we say this, we are saying something that we had looked at from uh, an historical background. Mm -hmm. uh, about representation, already we have recommended the, uh, the, the reduction of the representation. Actually, we are talking about only wa having 150 mm -hmm. members mm -hmm. of parliament. So, uh, and we are, we are actually talking about reducing the wider representation. Mm -hmm. But what we are saying is, because all institutions, whether government, private, social, community institutions, they've tried to stabilize this country. You're talking about reducing the numbers of members of parliament, but yes. on the other hand, yes. you're talking about yes. an additional leadership in the country that yes. Kenyans are actually saying we are already overrepresented. Yes. Now, uh, there's a difference. Uh, today, if you had one man representing you and cutting off 20 others, in terms of budget, mm -hmm. you realize that these 30, 40 people you have put aside and included one person who can best do what you are doing or what these people are doing would be better. For this reason, we have realized that Kenya from 2002 has never stabilized politically. So we said, because we have now a deputy president and a president, mm -hmm. we had these two five. Mm -hmm. So we have a prime minister and the two deputy prime ministers. And the rationale was this prime minister will now face parliament when there are questions. Mm -hmm. And the cabinet secretaries will now face the parliamentary committees. Okay. Mr. Bigambo, the church is talking about reducing the numbers of uh, the leadership when it comes to the National Assembly and also at the counties. Then they're talking about introducing the position of a prime minister and two deputies to bring political stability every, after every five years. Well, first, I welcome myself to the invitation by the ICK in the conversation about the necessity or the urgency of a, place, a plebiscite or maybe a referendum to change the governance structure in this country. As to the whether the invitation by ICK is really necessary and timely is a discussion that we'll delve into a little later. The proposals that have been made by the council that he is speaking for, in good measure, I think uh, proposals that make a bit of sense, but not necessary sense, especially look, looking at issues critically where we are at as a nation. Now, the men of cloth have thrown themselves into the matters politics. Of course, I do not want to delve into matters to do with their work and why the, is it that they have ignored issues that are core of their mandate. But Today, when you look at the proposals, for instance, that have been made by the ICK as to whether it is necessary to introduce, actually for them they want the introduction of the position of the Prime Minister, the question of having two deputies, etc., and even their reflections about what the Prime Minister should be doing and what the Cabinet Secretaries will be doing, etc., etc. And also the position, of, the position of an opposition leader at the National Assembly and also at the Senate. Now, the ICK has been very long on the question of political value and positions by their proposals, but has been extremely short, in fact, very mute, on the question of one value for money, the necessity, the urgency, the wisdom 
of having all this change of structure with new additions. Now, from where I sit and how we look at it in a very sensible way and objective, one, do we need an introduction of these new positions, Prime Minister, etc., and these others, merely for purposes of satisfying or satiating certain political interests? Or is it a question of having structures and positions that serve the interests of the nation presently and even into posterity? When we look at the structure as we have it today, what are the limitations that it has? And to what extent have we moved into a question of exploring these positions for the greater good of the nation. Mm -hmm. When ICK proposes, as they have done, is it a question of, of having a real sensible referendum, mm -hmm. or is it a question of having a dichotomous choice, contingent valuation, mm -hmm. like possibly we did, like for instance we did in 2005? If it's a question of reviewing or rethinking our constitution in terms of reviewing it, for the good interests of our country. Mm -hmm. The question of the executive structure is not the most urgent issue of national attention alone. Okay. There are critical issues that necessitate constitutional review. Okay. But the question of altering the governance structure purely for purposes mm -hmm. of what good Dactari has spoken to, political stability alone, mm -hmm. political stability around the world and in the history of democracies, even in the Commonwealth, does not come merely by, by way of having such introduction or such offices okay. and giving some dignity, as I've read their document, mm -hmm. dignifying the position of the leader of opposition and having it in such kind of uh, governance uh, okay. document that the and Constitution Dr. is. And Dr. Nzinga, that's, I, I was about to ask you that the exact thing that, that Mr. Bigambo has said. Yes. You're talking about creating all these political positions through a referendum, the, the chat proposal, yes. as it stands as for now. Yes. But how sure are you that it will bring some political stability after every five years when you talk about the electoral reforms that even the opposition has been crying for? Uh, let me make a correction about what my brother said. It was not about political stability per se alone. That's only one of the factors that drive the country. We are looking at the very key issue where Kenyans are now suffering because of corruption. At the time we met, there was the contentious fuel tax bill, wherever. And it was a feeling, those of us who met there, how do we now give Kenyans a better life? And it was like this. One of the problems we are now suffering as a country is because virtually we have no opposition. Mm -hmm. Really? We have no Mr. opposition Bigamo, in the country. Hold on, just for Mr. We have no opposition. And for that reason, when the, uh, His Excellency the President mm -hmm. and Honorable Wright or, uh, or Dinka, they, they, uh, when they meet, mm -hmm. they, they decide and that is how things move. So when now, you're talking about at that time, you're looking at the plight of Kenyans and the VAT was the, the, the hot topic by then. Yes. Having another referendum will yes. cost the country, and already Kenyans are raising concern about the cost of living. It's not even about a referendum. What we had agreed is a year from today, the time we met, we shall meet again. And we had given some time frame for the government to look at these things, mm -hmm. actually six months. And we said, why don't you consider, because we have no, uh, we actually have no position now. Mm -hmm. When we have an official opposition leader mm -hmm. who is legitimate fully equipped with everything whereby they don't actually because part of the reason we are ha oh, we are having the present setup mm -hmm. is someone is thrown out in the code mm -hmm. uh, you remember the the, the the eating of the meat and others are uh, the saliva thing and it's like somebody begins to ask how do i get into that thing okay. so it becomes easy to sell kenyans okay. but if they have a, a tough whereby they can die for it mm -hmm. and stand for the sake of these Kenyans. Mm -hmm. So the issue, the big thing here was not stability. It mm -hmm. was about accountability. Okay. And accountability was the president with the, the, men, the five men who are leading the government. Mm -hmm. They have another group here called official opposition. And these guys, it's like they are kind of equal. Mm -hmm. Because the official opposition is the runners up. Mm -hmm. The person who was number two. Okay. To, to the president. Okay. So accountability is the issue. So okay. that's our key thing. Okay, Mr. Bigambo. Well, I, for me it's regrettable that ICK has taken such a position. By way of analyzing critically the position or the pronouncements of Dr. Tari, 
ICK is merely engaging in religious political, in in religio political polemics. Look, let's face it. If Daktari is saying that their primary concern was on matters taxation, matters corruption, so the introduction of position of prime minister will reduce corruption. So the introduction of the position of two deputies will reduce corruption, will lower taxes. So the introduction of position of the, the uh, in, have, in fact, having the position of official opposition in the constitution will make life better for Kenyans. Daktari, with all honesty, if that is the weight of the argument of the ICK, then that argument is as good as not having made at all. Because today when you look at the state of our country, when you look at the state of our government as it is, when we look at the state of our constitution and the call for the changes or the referendum or the reforms that we need in our constitution, the question of the high taxes being faced by Kenyans today does not necessitate the calling of these new structures that ICK is proposing to make life better. Okay. In any case, let's face it. Okay. Today, when you look at the burden of life and the cost of living as it is today, mm -hmm. Kenyans are in need of one, an agency of national discussions mm -hmm. as to how government, whether big or narrow, mm -hmm. is making sense to their day-to-day -day lives. Okay, and Mr. Daktari, yes. just a quick question. Should we have a referendum? Should you go the referendum way? Then we talk about just scrapping, I mean, reducing the number of, uh, of people who represent Kenyans, because already Kenyans feel they are represented. And the question of uh, a prime minister, a deputy prime minister, leader of the opposition at the National Assembly and the Senate is not part of that referendum. Would you still support the referendum? Uh, actually, let me clarify this. We had proposed 150 constituencies, uh, uh, leading to 209 members of parliament. And after that has gone, then the other issue, and I want to, to go back to what my brother is talking about here, issues about taxes, about, uh, about the high cost of living, about corruption and others, they can actually be addressed through a proper leadership system, whereby there are people with equal powers or nearly equal powers mm -hmm. who can challenge each other. Which is okay, which yes. is okay, yes. Dr. Nzinga. But yes. my question is, yes. Yes. should you go the referendum way? Yes. Then the question is put, you're reducing the number of leadership. Yes. The members of parliament, members of the senate, and, yes. and the, at the counties. Yes. Then we don't have the conversation, we don't have a conversation of a prime minister, deputy prime minister, leader of the opposition at the National Assembly and at the Senate. Would you still support the call for a referendum as a church? We would, but with some reservations. Because as long as we have a president and a deputy without any official position, then there will always be a problem. And the reason will be, even when we have leader of majority in parliament, leader of majority or minority in parliament or in senate, the, 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 the truth is these are men or women of a lower cadre. So for the church is let's have the pos the, these other positions. Yes. Okay, Dr. Bigambo. I mean, that, Mr. That, Bigambo. That sorry. is why Kenyans by their numbers are losing confidence in the churches and religious organizations. That is why I can see there is a growth of uh, lounges and, uh, and restaurants and pubs and the number of churches is going down because the church is losing its argument. Today, if the church could try to regain the public confidence it had during the long gone years of Bishop Mugi and the like, when the church was actually concerned about the plight of Kenyans and not trying to make arguments that could only fit into certain political arguments by certain political sections, then the church would start making sense. Today, the argument being made by the good Dr. Nzinga here are arguments really looking at it through very clear lenses, are arguments that are not worthy of the moment that we're living in today. I will tell you this, that Corruption and the question of accountability, even to the extent that it has been addressed by our constitution of Kenya 20 today, you know, 2010 today, accountability can be enhanced not by having the position of leader of official opposition created or having two deputies of prime minister and a prime minister answering, responding to questions in the parliament. In fact, while it is important for that to happen, today, what has led us to the place where we are politically Mm -hmm. One is the hero worshipping within the political circles when, for example, matters 
to do with the regulations, political parties, election laws, etc., not being followed or adhered to mm -hmm. by people across the political uh, ladder. When, for example, Dr. Nzinga here is speaking about a referendum and how we want to go into it, it would have even been important for them to exhaust the entire referendum issue. One, how much will that referendum cost? Okay. Two, other campaigners, depending on whatever side each side will take, each, you know, within the political divide, how much are they supposed, for example, to expend on these referendum campaigns? Okay. Now, look, we don't even have a piece of legislation to guide mm -hmm. that. Beyond that, we even have pieces of legislation to guide matters elections, to guide campaign financing. Mm -hmm. What those are there to? Okay. Today, does the church itself adhere to regulations that are supposed to guide it in its operations. Okay, Mr. Bigambo, as we bring this conversation to a close in, in a minute, what I want to ask you is, instead of talking about additional positions that the church is talking about, why can't you start talking about electoral reforms to ensure that we have a free and fair election? Okay, uh, thank you so much, and uh, thank you, my brother, for your sentiments, although the church is not losing out. At the end of the already. day, the church will be the only body that will be found legitimate. Mm -hmm. Now, let me say this with all due respect. The electoral reforms that we actually came up with were as follows. We said, one, we reduce the constituencies to 150 mm -hmm. so that we have two or nine members of parliament. Mm -hmm. Then we said that uh, we have 47 women representatives okay. and the 12 special members, those who will be in charge of the different groups like youth, mm -hmm. women, as uh, like youth people with disabilities and mm -hmm. other special groups okay so those are the electoral reforms and these reforms mm -hmm. should not necessarily even come through a referendum okay thank they you they can so still much. come through parliament okay gentlemen uh, sorry i have to bring this conversation to an end sorry for that uh, mr bigambo we've been talking to javas bigambo who's a, a governance expert and dr edward zinga who's a, an education advisor at the ncck talking about the referendum the church weighing in on this referendum time to take a short break you're on KT News Center. Uh, it is exactly 10 a.m. And uh, we'll, we'll be right back with more.